Okay, guys, so last week we went to an event called the Regeneration Forum, and they were talking about heaven, hell, and the supernatural. And a few people didn't want to go because they were scared. So, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. But it was, uh, it was a really good event. So I want to give some time. There's only four people here who went. So we're going to, and people who didn't go, we're just going to kind of go through each topic and see if there's things that you, um, uh, things that you like, things that you learned that maybe can be helpful to all of us. Uh, and then for those who didn't go, you know, some things that you, maybe you wanted to talk about in the future. Um, so, heaven, hell, supernatural. We went over a lot of this stuff in our class. Uh, eternity. And that was really the, the whole thing is about eternity. We had, there was a great closing message. And you can actually watch these messages on their website. Um, they should be up there pretty soon. But uh, here's what, we t there, what was discussed. And I didn't go to every one myself. All right. First one was ghosts, reincarnation, and judgment. They talked about Satan, demons, and exorcisms, angels, feathers, wings, and harps, end times, confusion, exploring different views of hell, and which way, what about people who believe other religions? All right, so that's what all the topics were. So let's, let's start with ghost reincarnation and judgment. Did anyone go to that? Josh did. No, never mind. I didn't go to that Never one. mind. All right. Yeah. So some of the people who went aren't here this morning. And I didn't go to that one either. Um, but let's see what you learn. Let's see if we know any of this already. So there are so many ideas about what happens the moment we die. In this lab, we will explore some of the most commonly believed thoughts and compare them to what the scriptures say. All right, so we talked about this, what happens right after you die. And we all know what Josh believes. And we all know what the other side is. Um, and not that it's wrong, but you know, that we know. So, what happens right when you die? Is reincarnation true? We talked about that. Are ghosts real? We didn't talk about that one. What do you guys think? Are ghosts real? Elmer says yes. <laughs> I say yes too. Carla says yes. What do you guys think? Yes? Ghosts real. Yeah. Josh says no. <laughs> Kim, what do you think? I think they are. Yeah, they are real. I think spirits are real. Well, what, that's <laughs> some no, other no. name for them. Yeah. So I think that's where, that's where we get in, that's where we get into a little confusion there. Is that, uh, okay, so are you saying ghosts as in dead people that are still living and walking around? Or are you saying ghosts as Maybe evil spirits. Yeah, that's, um, that's, what that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mean demons? Not Casper the ghost. Yeah. Not Is like Casper me. real or, oh, you know, are are do people appear to you from the dead? You know, does that happen? Ghosts. Evil spirits can take on something like that to kind of mm -hmm. mess with us. All right. Yeah, because we, we know that there is a spiritual realm, that we're very aware that that's, that's real. So, the question is whether people come back and haunt you. You know, like all the movies we watch, in the house that the person died, they're still there and they're haunting you. Is that real, you know? And that's what they talked about over there. I didn't make it to the class, so somebody who did, it would be nice to have somebody here who was. How does Church of God feel about reincarnation, though? Do you know? Um, well, re reincarnation is not, um, uh, you know, like a biblical right. teaching. Mm -hmm. I don't think they have any affiliation with that, as far as I know. Yeah, because that would be, that would be like crazy. Yeah, I know. I agree. Yeah, so is reincarnation true? You know, we talked about that, right? Steve, what do you think? Is reincarnation true? No. Why? Because their belief in reincarnation is that 
they come back as something else, an animal or Okay. Mm, now you're stuck. Impressive. Okay, what should we think of the near-death experiences? I think Kim actually did a little talk on that. Remember where you near near death or where you died and then you came back to life? And they seen Jesus. And they saw yeah. <laughs> God. What should we think about that? You know, we, we talked about that. You know, what should we is it true? Should we trust everything they say? Um because this is all like what you see. Yeah, again, I didn't make it to that class, so. Are we judged after we die? Do people get a second chance? What do you guys think? Do people get a second chance after you die? Elmer says no. Steve says no. Any yeses? Carla's thinking. Oh, you said no. Okay. Do we what? Sorry? Do people get a second chance after you die? No. Well, well, I don't know. Oh, she doesn't know now. Okay. Uh, like, uh, I think <clears throat> purgatory, not necessarily a second chance, but it's like, we're, you know, you're getting cleaned up to get into heaven. I think that's part of the belief of purgatory. Are there rewards in heaven? Yes. Do you get rewards in heaven? Mm-hmm. What do you, you think? keep getting rewards in heaven? No. But you get rewards in heaven. Alright. So that's a good one. We haven't talked about that. Do you, are there rewards in heaven? And I just, I heard a good talk on that this week, which is, it was pretty cool. <coughs> Alright, so this guy's name is Chris Nye, and uh, he actually has a book, he's got a blog, he's got a, um, uh, you know, he's on podcast, YouTube. So if you want to check out what he said about these topics, feel free. All right, how about this scary one? Satan, demons, exorcisms. Anyone go to that one? All right, three people went to that one. So let's hear some thoughts. All right, so discussing anything related to Satan, demons, and exorcisms is a very sensitive topic. You often don't hear much teaching about it. This is the very reason why we are devoting time to this sensitive topic. All right. So here's some of the questions they were they were going to talk about. And then if you guys have anything you learned or you want to touch on, bring it up. So who is Satan and where did he come from? Did you guys learn anything new? Yeah. That Satan, devil, Lucifer, all that, those weren't, isn't his name. Those aren't his name. That it's just title. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So no one really knows his name. Yeah, it's, uh, he said it's a reoccurring insult, like one hit punch. Like God put it in the Bible that I, I'm nobody will know your name. They'll hmm. just know your title. Right. Because Satan, you know what Satan means, anybody? The Seaver, right? A- no. Adversary. Adversary. Yeah. It's like someone against your antagonist. But he did the, the way that he projected it, he did believe that he was an angel. Yeah. Alright, and where did he come from? Did you learn any things about where he did he come from? Anything new? You just said angel. Okay. Somebody needs to silence their phone. Yeah, I'm phone. Like I'm sorry. Yeah, really that's hard. true. What are demons? All right. So we talked about ghosts. What are demons? Jesse, any thoughts? Uh, and his and his view of demons were um, just as as you would say the 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 ghost. And kind of just haunting people, so that was his view on the demons. Uh, he had he talked about his experience with um, casting some out, and he's had some experience with um, his friends casting some out. But that can actually uh, discern and see the spiritual realm. He said that he didn't have that gift and that he couldn't see it, but wow. he, he knows of them. But yeah, it was more of the uh, haunting type, taking over people and um, just causing havoc. So this guy who gave the talk, and his name is Dr. Gary Bershears, um, he actually did exorcisms, and he was in rooms, and he knows people who did it. So he was talking about experience, and what are demons, and he was saying that they're, up, they're like ghosts, they haunt people, they take people over, possess them. Um, 
I wasn't there. I didn't go to that class. Samuel did, and Josiah and all them, and Hannah, they learned a lot, and Jesse, you know. Um, so what are demons? So they are real. They're real, and they can take you over. Um, so ghosts, demons, that's kind of, is that right? That is that what, did he say that they're the same? No, he didn't say that. They were the same. I was just making that comparison. Okay. Can demons hurt Christians? Should we be afraid of them? So the way that he did it said that possession has three different definitions. I don't recall what three different were, but if this was the case and with the three different definitions, then uh, demons can possess Christian. Marty, you said you remember? Don't wait on it. Okay. All right, so Josh says, it, it, it get, in the definition, there's three different types of possession, and a Christian could get at least one of those types. So, no, possession has three definitions. Uh -huh. So if that's the case, yes, Christians can get possessed. Can get possessed. Well, in our main story, the, he was talking about a Christian, a uh, God-fearing woman, uh, the one that he went to go do the exorcism on. Okay. Uh, she was God fearing, uh, church girl, right. uh, Christian, full faith that nobody thought that um, the demon or would possess her or anything, right. you know. But it just one day out of um, random, she just started um, cursing, and mm -hmm. randomly just started cursing, like having cursing moments. And she was Christian, right? And everybody was like, "What's what's wrong with her?" You know, she was God fearing. Uh, what, why all of a sudden is she using these foul languages and having these um, random outbursts? And so they, they um, took her to pastors, other pastors, and, and him. And um, she said that she went, took the Bible out of the, the pastor's hand and kind of like, you know, threw it on the ground and started cursing them out. And then that's when they uh, performed the... The whole thing. So uh, it was a the reason why he said yes is because the guy encountered a Christian girl, a God fearing girl, and she became possessed. But that's not the first time. Like it's reoccurring. It's okay. It's happened in the past. Yeah, he a lot. did say it, that uh, all of them were uh, at their weakest. Like, that girl was getting sick, and at the hospital, that's when she just threw turned around and it was just like wow so it's like when your body gets weak or something gets weak and then that's when they so that's what in. invites them in no she, she, she was weak Could, right but i would like from my knowledge of movies of spiritual like you have to like <laughs> let them <laughs> in, <laughs> in no like an entrance? I don't know. Did they talk about that? We're talking about the demons. Did you go to that one? Like, okay. They just, just said that it's weak. Anybody at their weakest can, even a Christian can get. Well, you know, when Satan came to tempt Jesus was when he was fasting for 40 days, you know. Um, in that time period when he was weak. Yeah, that's what he talked about too. What, to back up his, uh, what Josh said was uh, when the demons come and attack you. It's when you're at your weakest. When you're at your weakest. Yeah. Eee. <laughs> so, you know, what? Then, and that's strategic, you know. they When the girl got sick, when she was in the hospital, she was probably, her faith was low, you know, so what's happening to me? But he also said, like, uh, possession of a demon is um, not, I wouldn't say common, but it's usual. Like at a subtle, at a subtle, um, how you say it? Like, for example, he said that there was a woman that kept saying, like, yeah, every time I look in the mirror or every time I, I, I'm by myself, I hear this voice telling me I'm fat, I'm ugly, and all this, mm. and like she was bulimic and like she was just wow. killing herself that way, and then in his sense, he, he has his own checklist. When he goes to do interviews like that, wow. to figure out if somebody's possessed, and s somebody hearing voices or putting him down, making him s physically sick, he says that's a possession. Wow. Mm. And, oh, and then somebody asks, "What do you do in that circumstance?" And then that's what um, he said, like just like Jesus uh, quoted the the word. You have to quote the word as well, but don't quote it to yourself. Scream it out loud. 
Wow. Let's see what power that has over it. Nice. Should you be afraid of them? Did he touch on that? No. He didn't talk about that? Uh, he, didn't, he didn't really Bless go you. into that, but he, and the way that he seen it was, yeah, don't be afraid of them, you know, kind of just um, cast them out. Um, just tell them to leave, but not really, you know, tell them to go to a certain spot. You know, it's just, just cast them out. Anybody he said, here? Oh, he said a, uh, in the Bible, it says that only one time it said that Jesus cast them out to a certain, certain location and it was to the pigs. Right. And it's because they asked for it. Other than that, don't cast them to hell, just cast them out where they are. <laughs> cast them Give out. Them grace. Yeah, huh. because some people cast them out like to the abyss, you know, they're right. like, oh, you know, you devil, get out of right. the abyss. You just know? get out. Yeah, he just said that uh, the Bible doesn't teach, you know, to cast them out and to go somewhere. You know, some people say, I cast you out, go to the foot of the cross, I'm going to go, you know, some some place. But, but in respect to shouldn't be afraid, I believe what he, he said was um, it's like the same authority that I was given to the demons. Is given uh, that same person give us authority as well. Right. And we have more authority over them. Right. Yeah, because Jesus conquered it. He conquered Satan and his demons on the cross, and, and he gave us authority, which is pretty cool. You know that you have authority over even demons. Just you know, I think a lot of us don't believe it. I know I I doubt that a lot. You know that me or a demon. You know we'd be shaking in the corner. Uh, no. <laughs> no, you do. Are exorcisms, re exorcisms real? Anybody? Yeah, Kim, what do you so. think? You think they are? Mm -hmm. She's yeah. seen a lot of movies. <laughs> You've seen a lot of movies. <laughs> well, the guy had first-hand experience. This guy, Dr. Gary Brashear, so... Yeah, I don't think it's the way that the movie projects them, but yeah, I think the exorcisms are real. So you said the way that the, the pastor exercised that Christian girl is he put his hand over her head mm. and just said some words and then it was released. Wow. So, like, no. so did she change after? No, she like, was gasping and weeping and she was like, oh, I thought that thing would never get out of me. Oh yeah, that's what, that's wow. what she said. So it can happen to a Christian and your weakest point, it could, you know. And she was aware. That's what it sounds like. She was aware? She was she aware, aware that, she was, that there was something in yeah, her. Yeah, wow. there was something in her that was different. But at the same time, we have, you know, God's given us power over him. So even Steve's, you got to be strong you know, <laughs> in your faith to do it, because I'll jump on you if not. But yeah, all right. Uh, so is there any t any questions or topics regarding this one, uh, think, Satan, demons, exorcisms? I think that only the people that have the gift of discernment that can really like see the demons. So it was like she was, re she really liked that class, and so she was telling me all about it. Um, and she said something about um, if you have the gift of discernment, like you would be able to basically like see, not not like literally see the demon, but you know, you can tell, like you can. Well, that guy you, said like, if you have a gift of discernment, you can see everything. Yeah. Really? yeah. Discerning said, your he's spirits. Like, you he, said, he said, I'm happy I don't have that gift. Yeah. He said he met people that do. And he, he said, said the scary. things that they see will scare anybody, even scares them. Yeah. So they actually like see, like the spiritual see, realm. The did, spiritual see, realm. did he say like what he saw? Yeah, um, just something that will scare them. Well, you have to understand some of these like movies you see. These creatures are beyond imagination. It's like somebody had to think of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so is there anything, uh, moving forward, is there anything you go, you guys would like to study in the future classes regarding this topic? you got to use these up, too. Uh, I would think it's like uh, encountering something like this. Like How do you deal with it? How do you come across a force time? Everybody's going to go be like, I don't know, go exercise, but... Yeah. All right, Elmer. Anything spark your mind about this? You weren't there. About this specific class. About that one. That Satan, demons, and exorcisms. Yeah, that we can address later on. 
All right, well, moving forward. Angels, feathers, wings, harps. Anybody go to that class? Nobody did. All right. 72% of Americans believe in angels, but what are they? In movies, television, regeneracy, people with wings, harps, and dressed in white floating on clouds. Is that what the Bible says they are? Anybody know anything about angels? What are they? Warriors. Warriors? If nobody went to the class, I don't think you should talk about it. Yeah. Well, I'm just kind of getting an idea. If, you know, is it something we should talk about in the future? Yeah. What do they look like? Do people become angels when they die? I think we can... Well, do we have guardian angels? Any thoughts on that one? Elmer, you think you have a guardian angel? His name is Jesus. <laughs> um, when, like, often, like, um, whether, like, we pray or, like, my, like, other, I've heard two other people pray, is, like, you ask for protection over someone's house, like, God, God like, put an angel there to guard their home, mm-hmm. or, like, um, you know, bless anyone that comes in, like, keep your angels around this home so that no one who has ill intention will be able to step in, or things like that, so I've heard that in prayer, and I've prayed that myself, too. Should we try to contact angels? Yeah. No, I think you why? I, mean, I don't know. The Bible. Why well, Steve has thoughts. What do you think? Steve? Should you try to communicate with your guardian angel if you have one? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a good question. Should yeah, you contact your actually does talk about it. Maybe we should. I don't think it matters. Yeah. But, yeah, the angels are a messenger of God, but we have the direct link now to God. Yeah. You know, should... I think that's, yeah, because people do, people pray to the angels, you know, pray to saints, pray to, is that something we should do? Well, we can always well, listen to the podcast. Yeah, we can listen to it. So, hey, that's that's something we should probably talk about. Um, well, I mean, in the, old, in the Old Testament, you hear about the angels coming down and then giving the message to the people. So at some point, we did have to speak to the angels. Right, face to face, yeah. I don't, I don't recall I ever know, like, a time where they prayed to an angel or worshipped. Or worshipped like, or, or yeah, they don't. Yeah. They don't do that to us. You know, they they're just like us. They said, you know, we're hey, we're just like you. We, you know, that's God who gets all the glory. Um, all right, so here's this. One. This one I went to. Anybody else go to end times? Josh did. Steve did. Jesse did. Marty, did you go? Yeah. All right, Hannah. All right, so end times confusion. Here it is. Uh, Movies and pop culture portrays all types of end times apocalypse scenarios. But the biggest question is what does scripture say about these very things? What are the things about the end times we know? And what is a mystery? All right. What is the end times and the apocalypse? Anybody know? I think that's like a great topic in general for us to go through. Do you know anything about it? I mean, a little bit, just from what I studied in school, but... So they talked about certain beliefs uh, about the rapture and the return of Jesus. There's premillennialism, there's... Millennialism. 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 Postmillennialism. <laughs> Anybody have any idea what those are and maybe where they stand? No. Yeah, that's why yeah. I lost. Yeah, so that was a new one. A lot of us hadn't heard that before. Any thoughts? I wrote it down. She wrote it down. Okay. Carla, you have a thoughts on that? Kim, you ever heard that before? No, I haven't. Alright, so what it is is uh, when the second coming of Christ, there's this time where the belief is some people are going to be taken up, raptured with him, and there's this thousand year period and that's that's where this millennialism thing is there's you spend a thousand years with Jesus the devil set free or you know that then there's different different beliefs regarding that I don't remember all of them but that's what it is millennialism there's this thousand year period when the people meet Jesus um, so it's not something we talked about because you know it's who knows when it is or whether it's already had stuff like that. Um, oh, so we're just the ones left after the rapture? <laughs> yeah, so that was. Oh. That, was that was. That was it. <laughs> 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 no, 
Mm, I wasn't, um, but go ahead. Pre is you, the church is growing, and then the rapture happens, and everybody that was good goes, and then everybody that stays is just tribulation. Post is the church is growing, but you stay, like for some of the rap, like some of the tribulation of the seven years, and then the rapture hits. Mm -hmm. And that one's the pre, the most dominant is the pre millennialism, and it, I can't yeah. say it. Okay, so a thousand years, and then the rapture, and then some people say the rapture, and then a thousand years. For which one? For pre. No. So pre is is we or you know everybody. Ah, oh, millennialism. That's the other one. And yes. then it's the rapture, and then it's the tribulation. Yeah. So one is one is. Pre is before the thousand years you get taken up. Amillennialism. Amillennialism does um, the church is growing and therefore the kingdom of God is here on earth. Right now. Right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're in the thousand year period right, right now, now. Mm -hmm. and then pre millet or post millennialism is like uh, there we're we're on earth for a certain period and then God so takes us out. There was one like distinctive like God's waiting for more Christians because there's going to be more Christians like there's supposed to be a percentage of Christians like 70% of Christians in the I mean population right. is supposed to be until the Christian, whole world and then he's going to bring us up right. right but he said that was back in the day that was more yeah that was more popular what we what we learned is that there's lots of like all these different beliefs at different times in history people believed one stronger than the other because of the historical context. During the world wars, everybody thought for sure they were, they were post millennialism, like God's going to take us out of this right now. And then when things are at peace, people are more saying, we're, this, is, this is that time where everything's flourishing, the gospel's moving. So, yeah, that was a topic that we may need to touch in the future, one that we never have. So, that'd be good to talk on. Uh, how about the 666? Anybody know what that means? What is 666 Antichrist? Sign of the Beast. Sign of the Beast. Sign. So, anybody know what the numbers mean? I was blown away when I heard what, you know, some of the stuff he was saying. But everybody Thoughts? thought that Hitler was the Antichrist because he was putting barcodes on everybody. Right. Like, so there was little... Antichrist, all yeah. history that people attributed yeah. so the, as Yeah, exactly. So it's like you look, everybody's right. thinking that at some point in time, the Antichrist will come, this will all happen. But what he was saying is that maybe in every point in history, there has been Antichrist throughout. Like even, uh, I don't know, I think it was just before Jesus came, there was this Roman emperor who just completely was destroying the Jews, was just tearing people up. I forget his name, yeah. But I, anyway, his part of his name, I, I can't remember exactly how the numericals were, but in the Jewish history, they used numerical system for letters. So they spelled out this, this Roman emperor's name, and in the Jewish numerical system, it you could... Spell his name oh, as six six six. Nero and Domitian, those were the Roman Empire. Oh. Yeah, so six 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 was his name. So, and then you get to Hitler, where he's actually putting barcodes on people, uh, different, you know, and putting numbers into them. And uh, I something about him with this. I don't know if it, his name was six six six, but oh. anyway, yeah, that was the it was the numerical system the Jews used to describe things. And what was crazy is that. In to 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 read these apocalyptic, um, what was it kind of certain type of literature? What was it? Apocalyptic literature, and how to um, what was the word? They can use for that. Yeah, I forget. But gematria. Gematria is the yeah. That was the numerical system the Jews used. But just reading the apocalyptic literature, you need to know how to do it. It's there's a there's a there's a way to read it, and. Uh, but it, didn't he say something about um, that he? I don't, I don't know. He said he believed, or it was a theory that Revelations is talking about something that already happened. Something that already happened, yeah. 
Yeah, he was, he was saying a lot about that, that a lot of revelation. So the reason is when you read apocalyptic literature, they use things like the beast and all these things. And what he was saying is that they, they wouldn't, in that period of time, they weren't just calling out people's names like it's Roman poetic, emperor. It's like poetic right. to, the, uh, to the Israelites. They were describing something occurring then with images and stuff like that to describe. And they, like the king of Tyre and then... Which was right. a very, very uh, uh, way of writing uh, for the Israelites. Style, yeah. yeah. And one big thing is that we actually looked at in heaven, there's going to be no sea, it said. We looked at a verse, heaven there will be no sea. And he said, in apocalyptic literature, sea means chaos and confusion and all that. And when he talks about no sea, it doesn't mean no ocean. It just means there's no chaos, there's, no, there's peace um, and stuff like that. Uh, it was it was pretty interesting because I had never because you know when you read a, Revelations I just like I don't know what this is. I'm just uh, you get all scared when you read it but he said it's all it's imagery for something else they're trying to say and you have to know how to how to how to read it um, so maybe at some point we'll touch on that uh, and I thought it was so <clears throat> that he wrapped it up saying like that is the of all the Bible like that is what should give us hope I mean the New Testament. Like, and usually, like, the New Testament, at least, I don't know about you guys, but me growing up, like, it was always, like, the darker end of times, like, you know, you should be scared of that, like, it's the horror part of, like, the New Testament, right. and he said, the way that he, or how he was putting it all together, it was just, like, you no, know, as believers, that should give us hope more than anything, it shouldn't strike fear in our hearts, there should be hope. That's why he wrote it, he was saying, that's why he wrote Revelations, to give them hope, you know, that, that, you know, Jesus conquered, you're going to be okay. That's right. So, go ahead. He said, have an imagery, earthly reality to give people hope. Christ coming to slay the beast. Oh, right. Um, exploring different views of hell. Oh, sorry, any questions on this one that you guys think we should talk about in the future? End time confusions? The millennium. Nothing. Everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, and it's good, because I don't know that we'll ever touch it in the big service. So if you guys want to devote some time, we can all study it together. Um, no, we don't care either way. He said, I'm going to heaven. Don't matter to me. <laughs> um, all right. So, okay. Well, yeah, that's one we can talk about. I, I learned a lot just in that short period of, with an hour, more than I learned in my whole life. It was crazy. So he just poured... <laughs> <laughs> right in my throat. Uh, exploring different views of hell. Did you guys learn anything new when you talked about that? Steve, anything come yes. out? Josh? I remember, I forgot who said it, but, um, oh yeah, he said it. <laughs> <laughs> he said exactly what you said that. Um, I stole my content that, from him. Yeah. <laughs> like, word for word, I was like, it sounds like robbery. Patriotism. <laughs> but he said that um, the new kingdom, new heaven on earth is going to come down, right. and hell is really right next to it. Outside the city. Outside. And he said that the torture is only there to keep them from crossing over. That's what I, I got from it. Uh, it's not real torture, but it's people like being held back from coming crossing to the other side yeah yeah one thing i remember from the last message and it was with for everybody that got it was that hell was like what um, josh was saying that it was outside of the city walls and it was a place to go where people would go out there to like sacrifice children and, and do their evil desires their evil evil deeds and that um the the word hell was was that location it wasn't really like this underground Gehenna. um yeah it wasn't Gehenna. it wasn't really this was underground place, uh, chamber, chamber chamber torture chamber but it was like more outside of the city walls that people would went to go just to um touch dip their finger into their evil desires their sin mm -hmm. and um that's what they called that place yep uh, that's right yeah and we talked about that all right anybody go to this one which way um, all religions point to the same direction. Did anybody attend that one? Nobody else. Uh, Hannah, you went to one. You were talking about it was interesting. Which one was it? Was it the ghosts or something? Oh, yeah. Because we, we had questions about that. Um, 
you know, like Argos Real, do you want to just share some thoughts on that before we close up? Um, the only thing I got, like to sum the whole thing up goes reincarnation judgment that um, when you hear like the stories of people talking about like oh I saw my pastor or my aunt sitting on my edge of my bed and they told me um, don't do this because it's bad and you know it was a sign from God like when people say that mm. like um, the lady who saw Pastor William like that those kinds of things and you're like like what is that how could why would any devil be saying stuff that's good you know like it's confusing how how could they do that but the thing he was saying was like as a pastor whenever people come to him and tell him that oh i saw this thing and that he says i never i never think that they're lying i always believe that they saw what they saw what i tell them is to be aware of who is lying to them because God is the God of all the realms or whatever, you know, he's the creator of everything. But on this earth, there is a God of this earth. And you all know who he is. And he was saying that um, it's important to know that no matter what it is you think you see, or like, you know, it's there. But there's somebody who is telling you what you're seeing and manipulating your mind. So you think that you're seeing like, oh, my mom or my grandma, and I know she loves me, like she would never do anything wrong to me. And he was saying that um, it's just you being lied to because they know, he knows what you want to see. And then for the thing about Samuel. Um, oh, when, so when, Samuel's, when, Samuel, when Saul called up Samuel from the dead to give him advice, yeah. he talked about that. Can you pull a verse up? I don't know where it is. Okay. Well, the ver in the verse, um, Saul goes and he's he's like, um, you know, God has turned away from me. I don't know what to do. Um, who who do I go to? And he's like, oh, I know that there was one who was a, a wise man. You know, he goes to find Samuel, but Samuel had already died. And so he goes and he goes in the night when nobody can see him. And he goes to the lady, the witch lady, and he, she's like, you know, this is wrong. Like, like, I would get killed for this. And, he go, and then he goes, oh, you know, you'll be fine. I can assure you, you'll be fine. And so he says, um, I need you to pull, like, pull somebody from the dead for me. And then she's going, and she does her, like, seance or whatever. And she goes, um, she's frightened, and she, she says, I see a man. And he's dressed in robes, and he goes, oh, "That's Samuel. I know that's Samuel. Um, ask him what I'm to do. Like God has turned away from me. Where, where do I go, or how do I conquer, or whatever?" And then she said something like, "He says, why have you awakened me?" And um, blah 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 blah. So the main point the guy was making was that. The bottom or so. Re read the text. It doesn't say it's Samuel. Saul doesn't even see what she sees. She's seeing it, and then Saul just assumes it's Samuel. And God had turned away from Saul. So what other God <laughs> of where he's at is going to come into his mind? And who is he going to pray to? You know, who is he going to if there was, God was turned from him? So that it was it was crazy stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, just think about all the tarot card readings when you go into, you know, meet with people who tell your future and even to call up the dead. That's pretty popular right now. Uh, you know, who's speaking to you? You know, is it God or is it, are they contacting the devil, deceiving you? And it's a big deal right now. A lot of business. I see some businesses all over. That's what they're doing. It's like, man, it's good business, but <laughs> shoot, crazy. Scam. Yeah. How do. How do we feel about like horoscopes and stuff? Right, right. Because that reminds me another week. <laughs> so we'll have to talk about that. Oh, this is really horoscope. Really <laughs> yeah, it was good All right, guys, we're going to end it. So, yeah, if you have any questions about that, I'm going to read you a verse before we end. Uh, it's this one. It's, uh, it says, For God so loved the world that, every, that he gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So that was that they ended with. They said that we all live, we know we have eternal life. So that was a confidence that you can have. Do you know it? 
you have eternal life. And uh, live live like it. So we're going to next week. We're going to continue on heaven. We're going to be probably finishing up uh, one or two classes to finish up on heaven. So let's pray. And uh, again, if you have questions on this, we'll we'll touch on it in the future.